Hi. Welcome back to another hsebox.com video. In this video, we will provide all information you need to carry out your job safety analysis in your workplace. At the end of this video, we have an offer for you, so watch till the end and don't miss it. But before we continue, I can't believe you do not subscribe to our channel yet. Do you know that subscribe to our channel is free? And drop a like it's free as well. Come on, that will encourage us to make more videos like this. Thank you very much, we really appreciate it. So, let's get started. What is a job safety analysis? A job safety analysis, JSA, is a procedure that helps integrate accepted safety and health principles and practices into a particular task or job operation. In a JSA, each basic step of the job is to identify potential hazards and to recommend the safest way to do the job. Other terms used to describe this procedure are Job Hazard Analysis, JHA, and Job Hazard Breakdown. Some individuals prefer to expand the analysis into all aspects of the job, not just safety. This approach is known as Total Job Analysis. The methodology is based on the idea that safety is an integral part of every job and not a separate entity. In this video, only health and safety aspects will be considered. The terms job and task are commonly used interchangeably to mean a specific work assignment, such as operating a grinder, using a pressurized water extinguisher, or changing a flat tire. JSAs are not suitable for jobs defined too broadly, for example, overhauling an engine, or too narrowly, for example, positioning car jack. What are the benefits of doing a job safety analysis? One of the methods used in this example is to observe a worker actually perform the job. The major advantages of this method include that it does not rely on individual memory and that observing or performing the process prompts the recognition of hazards. For infrequently performed or new jobs, observation may not be practical. One approach is to have a group of experienced workers and supervisors complete the analysis through discussion. An advantage of this method is that more people are involved in a wider base of experience and promoting a more ready acceptance of the resulting work procedure. Members of the Health and Safety Committee must also participate in this process. The initial benefits of developing a JSA will become clear in the preparation stage. The analysis process may identify previously undetected hazards and increase the job knowledge of those participating. Safety and health awareness is raised, communication between workers and supervisors is improved, and acceptance of safe work procedures is promoted. A JSA, or better still, a written work procedure based on it, can form the basis for regular contact between supervisors and workers. It can serve as a teaching aid for initial job training and as a briefing guide for infrequent jobs. It may be used as a standard for health and safety inspections or observations. In particular, a JSA will assist in completing comprehensive accident investigations. What are the four basic steps? Four basic stages in conducting a JSA are Selecting the job to be analyzed Breaking the job down into a sequence of steps Identifying potential hazards Determining preventive measures to overcome these hazards. What is important to know when selecting the job? Ideally, all jobs should be subjected to a JSA. In some cases, there are practical constraints posed by the amount of time and effort required to do a JSA. Another consideration is that each JSA will require revision whenever equipment, raw materials, processes, or the environment change. For these reasons, it is usually necessary to identify which jobs are to be analyzed. Even if an analysis of all jobs is planned, this step ensures that the most critical jobs are examined first. Factors to be considered in setting a priority for the analysis of jobs include Accident frequency and severity, jobs where accidents occur frequently or where they occur infrequently but result in serious injuries. Potential for severe injuries or illnesses, the consequences of an accident, hazardous condition, or exposure to harmful products are potentially severe. Newly established jobs, due to a lack of experience in these jobs, hazards may not be evident or anticipated. Modified jobs, new hazards may be associated with changes in job procedures. Infrequently performed jobs, workers may be at greater risk when undertaking non-routine jobs, 
and a JSA provides a means of reviewing hazards. How do I break the job into basic steps? After a job has been chosen for analysis, the next stage is to break the job into steps. A job step is defined as a segment of the operation necessary to advance the work. As we will see in our example, care must be taken not to make the steps too general. Missing specific steps and their associated hazards will not help. On the other hand, if they are too detailed, there will be too many steps. A rule of thumb is that most jobs can be described in less than 10 steps. If more steps are required, you might want to divide the job into two segments, each with its separate JSA or combine steps where appropriate. We will use as an example, in this video, the analysis to change a flat tire to help better understand the procedure to carry out a JSA. An important point to remember is to keep the steps in their correct sequence. Any step which is out of order may miss serious potential hazards or introduce hazards that do not actually exist. Each step is recorded in sequence. Make notes about what is done rather than how it is done. Each item is started with an action verb. For this example, we are driving a car and suddenly we realize we have a flat tire so what do we need to do? 1. We need to park the vehicle. 2. Remove the spare and tool kit. 3. Pry off the hub cap and loosen the lug bolts, nuts. For this example, these three steps are enough of course in your JSA you need to go through all steps. Let's use this type of form. You can find this form on our site, check the link in the description. First, let's fill in the task we will assess. As we already refer to the task it will be changing a flat tire. In your JSA you should also fill the name of the person who carries out the analysis, the reviewer and the person that approved this JSA, and the dates. Let's start to fill the sequence of steps, or the sequence of events to perform the task. First, we need to park the vehicle. Once the vehicle is safely parked we need to remove the spare and tool kit. After it's time to pry off the hub cap and loosen the lug bolts. In your JSA, you are supposed to have more tasks to be performed, for the purpose of this video we'll consider only these three tasks. This part of the analysis is usually prepared by knowing or watching a worker do the job. The observer is normally the immediate supervisor. However, a more thorough analysis often happens by having another person, preferably a member of the health and safety committee, participate in the observation. Key points are less likely to be missed in this way. The job observer should have experience and be capable in all parts of the job. To strengthen full cooperation and participation, the reason for the exercise must be clearly explained. The JSA is neither a time and motion study in disguise nor an attempt to uncover individual unsafe acts. The job, not the individual, is being studied to make it safer by identifying hazards and making modifications to eliminate or reduce them. The worker's experience contributes to making job and safety improvements. The job should be observed during normal times and situations. For example, if a job is routinely done only at night, the JSA review should also be done at night. Similarly, only regular tools and equipment should be used. The only difference from normal operations is the fact that the worker is being observed. When completed, the breakdown of steps should be discussed by all the participants, always including the worker, to make that all basic steps have been noted and are in the correct order. How do I identify potential hazards? Once the basic steps have been recorded, potential hazards must be identified at each step. Based on observations of the job, knowledge of accident and injury causes, and personal experience, list the things that could go wrong at each step. A second observation of the job being performed may be needed. Since the basic steps have already been recorded, more attention can now be focused on each potential hazard. At this stage, no attempt is made to solve any problems which may have been detected. To help identify potential hazards, the job analyst may use questions such as these. Can any body part get caught in or between objects? Do tools, machines, or equipment present any hazards? Can the worker make harmful contact with moving objects? Can the worker slip, trip, or fall? Can the worker suffer strain from lifting, pushing, or pulling? Is the worker exposed to extreme heat or cold? Is excessive noise or vibration a problem? Is there a danger from falling objects? 
Is lighting a problem? Can weather conditions affect safety? Is harmful radiation a possibility? Can contact be made with hot, toxic, or caustic products? Are there dust, fumes, mists, or vapors in the air? This is not a complete list, you should assess all potential hazards that can arise during the activity. These potential hazards are listed in the middle column of our worksheet and numbered to match the corresponding job step. For example, for parking the vehicle, we can identify as hazards. Vehicle too close to passing traffic. Vehicle on uneven, soft ground. Vehicle may roll. To remove the spare and tool kit, we can consider, for example, strain from lifting spare and to pry off the hub cap and loosen lug bolts. For example, hub cap may pop off and hit you. Lug wrench may slip. Remember that all participants should jointly review this part of the analysis. How do I determine preventive measures? The final stage in a JSA is to determine ways to eliminate or control the hazards identified. The generally accepted measures, in order of preference, are 1. Eliminate the hazard. Elimination is the most effective measure. These techniques should be used to eliminate the hazards. Choose a different process. Modify an existing process. Substitute with less hazardous product. Improve environment. Modify or change equipment or tools. 2. Contain the hazard. If the hazard cannot be eliminated, Contact might be prevented by using enclosures, machine guards, worker booths, or similar devices. 3. Revise work procedures. Consideration might be given to modifying steps that are hazardous, changing the sequence of steps, or adding additional steps, such as locking out energy sources. 4. Reduce the exposure. These measures are the least effective and should only be used if no other solutions are possible. One way of minimizing exposure is to reduce the number of times the hazard is encountered. An example would be modifying machinery so that less maintenance is necessary. The use of appropriate personal protective equipment may be required. To reduce the severity of an incident, emergency facilities, such as eyewash stations, may need to be provided. In listing the preventive measures, do not use general statements such as be careful or use caution. Specific statements which describe both what action is to be taken and how it is to be performed are preferable. The recommended measures are listed in the right-hand column of the worksheet, numbered to match the hazard in question. For our example we can add preventive measures for example. For parking the vehicle, we can identify as hazards. Drive to an area well clear of traffic. Turn on emergency flashers. Choose a firm, level parking area. Apply the parking brake, leave the transmission in park, place blocks in front and back of the wheel diagonally opposite to the flat. To remove the spare and tool kit, we can consider, for example, turn the spare into an upright position in the wheel well, using your legs and standing as close as possible. Lift the spare out of the truck and roll to a flat tire. And to pry off the hub cap and loosen lug bolts. Pry off the hub cap using steady pressure. Use proper lug wrench, apply steady pressure slowly. This is an example of a complete JSA carried out for a particular task. Know it's important to share this information within your organization. How should I make the information available to everyone else? JSA is a useful technique for identifying hazards so that workers can take measures to eliminate or control hazards. Once the analysis is completed, the results must be communicated to all workers who are, or will be, performing that job. The side-by-side -side format used in JSA worksheets is not an ideal one for instructional purposes. Better results can be achieved by using a narrative-style communication format. For example, the work procedure based on the partial JSA developed as an example in this video might start out like this. 1. Park vehicle. Drive the vehicle off the road to an area well clear of traffic, even if it requires rolling on a flat tire. Turn on the emergency flashers to alert passing drivers so that they will not hit you. Choose a firm and level area for parking. You can jack up the vehicle to prevent rolling. Apply the parking brake, leave the transmission in park, 
and place blocks in the front and back of the wheel diagonally opposite the flat. These actions will also help prevent the vehicle from rolling. 2. Remove the spare and tool kit. To avoid back strain, turn the spare up into an upright position in its well. Stand as close to the trunk as possible and slide the spare close to your body. Lift out and roll to a flat tire. 3. Pry off the hub cap, loosen lug bolts, nuts, pry off the hub cap slowly with steady pressure to prevent it from popping off and striking you. Using the proper lug wrench, apply steady pressure slowly to loosen the lug bolts, nuts, so that the wrench will not slip, get lost, or hurt your knuckles. And so on, all tasks must be included in your document to share in your organizations, with the information from the JSA that was previously carried out. We hope this video helps you to improve your knowledge about job safety analysis and improve your next assessment in your workplace. If you have any questions let us know in the comments section below. And we are happy to help you. Check our channel for more safety topics. The link is in the description. Never forget safety is your responsibility. Stay safe always. Bye bye, see you soon.